Well, all right, who here is ready for another reading of the old Ogrim's Complete Fairy Tales? I know I am. But first, we gotta set the mood, as we often do, right? <laughs> You thought I was dumb, but I wasn't. I added in a little bit more of the riff there. Mm, crappy as it was. <laughs> All right, what are we reading tonight, you may wonder? Well, we left off with old Rank Rank, and we advancing to one you may avoid. But it might be a little different, because they all seem to be Hansel and Gretel. That's right. So let's dive in, shall we? Make sure I'm centered there. <clears throat> Hansel and Gretel. Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter and his wife and his two children. The boy's name was Hansel and the girl's Gretel. They had very little to bite or to sup, and once, when there was great dearth in the land, the man could not even gain the daily bread. And as he lay in bed one night thinking of this... And turning and tossing, he sighed heavily and said to his wife, What will become of us? We cannot even feed our children. There is nothing left for ourselves. Well, I will tell you what, husband, answered the wife. We will take the children early in the morning into the forest where it is thickest. And make a fire we will give each of them a piece of bread. Then we will go to our work and leave them alone. They will never find the way home again. And we shall be quit of them. No, wife, said the man. I cannot do that. I cannot find my heart to take my children into the forest and leave them there alone. The wild animals will soon come and devour them. Oh, you fool, said she. Then we will all four starve. You had better get the coffins ready. And she left him no peace until he consented. But I really pity the poor children, said the man. The two children had not been able to sleep for hunger and had heard what the stepmother had said to their father. Gretel wept bitterly and said to Hansel, It is over for us. Do be quiet, Gretel, said Hansel, and do not fret. I will manage something. And when the pants had gone to sleep, he got up and he put on his little coat, opened the back door, and slipped out. The moon was shining brightly, and the white flints that lay in front of the house glistened like pieces of silver. Hansel stooped and filled the little pocket of his coat full as, he w as full as it would hold. And then he went back again and said to Gretel, Be easy, dear little sister, and go to sleep quietly. God will not forsake us. And laid himself down again in his bed. When the day was breaking and before the sun had risen, the wife came and awakened the two children, saying, Get up, you lazy bones. We are going into the forest to cut wood. And then she gave each of them a piece of bread and said, This is for dinner, and you must not eat it before then, for you will get no more. And Gretel carried the bread under her apron, for Hansel had his pockets full of flints. And then they set off all together on their way to the forest. And when they had gone a little way, Hansel stood still and looked back toward the house. And this he did again and again till his father said to him, Hansel, what are you looking at? Take care not to get your legs. Oh, father, said Hansel, I'm looking at the little white kitten who is sitting up on the roof to bid me goodbye. You young fool, said the woman, it's not your kitten, but the sunshine on the chimney pot. Of course, Hansel had not been looking at his kitten, but had been taking every now and then a flint from his pocket and dropping it on the road. When they reached the middle of the forest, the father told the children to collect wood and make a fire to keep them warm. 
and had some grow to gather brushwood enough for a little mo- enough for a little mountain rather, and it was set on fire. And when the flame was burning quite high, the wife said, "Now lie down by the fire and rest yourselves, you children, and we will go and cut wood. And when we are ready, we will come and fetch you." So Hansel and Greta sat by the fire, and at noon they each ate their pieces of bread. They thought their father was in the wood all the time, and they seemed to hear the strokes of an axe. But really it was only a dry branch hanging in a withered tree that the wind moved to and fro. So when they had stayed there a long time, their eyelids closed with weariness, and they fell fast asleep. When at last they woke, it was night, and Gretel began to cry and said, How shall we ever get out of the wood? But Hansel, comforting her, said, Wait a little while longer till the moon rises, and then we can easily find our way home. And when the moon was full, got up, Hansel took his sister by the hand and followed the way where the the flint stones shone like silver and showed them the road. They walked on the whole night through, and at the break of day they came to their father's house. They knocked at the door. When the wife opened it and saw it was Hansel and Gretel, she said, You naughty children, why did you sleep so long in the wood? We thought you was never coming home again. But the father was glad, for it had gone to his heart to leave them both in the woods alone. Not very long after that, (laughs) there was again a great scarcity in those parts, and the children heard their mother say at night in bed to their father, Everything's finished up. We have only half a loaf, and after that the tale comes to an end. The children must be off. We will take them farther into the wood this time so that they should never be able to find their way back again. There is no other way to manage. The man felt sad at heart, and he thought it would be better to share one last morsel with one's children. But the wife would listen to nothing of that, and she said, but scolded and reproached him. Oh, she would listen to nothing he said, rather, and scolded and reproached him. He who says A must say B too, and when a man is given in once, he has to do it a second time. But the children were not asleep and had heard all the talk. When the parents had gone to sleep, Hansel got up to go out and get more flint stones as he'd done before. But the wife had locked the door and Hansel could not get out. But he comforted his little sister and said, Don't cry, Gretel, and go to sleep quietly. God will help us. Early the next morning, the wife came and pulled the children out of bed. She gave them each a little piece of bread less than before, and on the way into the wood, Hansel crumpled the bread in his pocket and often stopped to throw a crumb on the ground. Hansel, what are you stopping behind and staring for, said the father. I'm looking at my little pigeon sitting on the roof to say goodbye to me, answered Hansel. You fool, said the wife, that's no pigeon but the morning sun shining on the chimney pots. Hansel went on as before, strewed the breadcrumbs all along the road. The woman led the children far into the wood, where they had never before, where had never been before in all their lives. And again there was a large fire made, and the mother said, Sit still there, you children, and when you're all tired, you can go to sleep. We are going into the forest to cut wood, and in the evening we are ready to go home. We will come and fetch you. So when noon came, Gretel shared her bread with Hansel, who had strewed his along the road. Then they went to sleep, and the evening passed, and no one came for the poor children. When they awoke, it was dark, and Hansel comforted his sister and said, Wait a little, Greta, until the moon gets up, and then we shall be able to see the way home by the crumbs of bread that I have scattered along it. So when the moon rose up, they got up, but they could find no crumbs of bread, for the birds of the wood in the fields had come and pecked them up. Hansel thought they might find the way all the same, but they could not. 
They went on all night and the next day from the morning till the evening, but they could not find the way out of the wood. And they were very hungry, for they had nothing to eat but the few berries they could pick up. And when they were so tired that they could no longer drag themselves along, they laid down under a tree and fell asleep. It was now the third morning since they had left their father's house, and they were always trying to get back to it, but instead of that, they only found themselves farther in the wood. And if help had not soon come, they would have stopped. About noon, they saw a pretty snow-white bird sitting in a bough and singing so sweetly that they stopped to listen. And when he had finished, the bird spread his wings and flew before them. And they followed him until they came to a little house. And the bird perched on the roof, and when it came nearer, they saw that the house was built of bread and roofed with cakes and windows of transparent sugar. We will have some of this, said Hansel, and make a fine meal. I'll eat a piece of the roof, Gretel, and you can have some of the window. That will taste sweet. So Hansel reached up and broke off a bit of the roof just to see how it tasted. And Greta stood by the window and gnawed at it. Then they heard a thin voice call from inside. Nibble, nibble like a mouse. Who's a nibbling at my house? And the children answered, never mind, it's the wind. And then they went on eating, never disturbing themselves. Hansel, who found the roof tasted very nice, took down a great piece of it. And Gretel pulled out a large round pane and sat down and began upon it. And then the door opened and an aged woman came out, leaning upon a crutch. Hansel and Gretel felt very frightened and they let fall what they had in their hands. The old woman, however, nodded her head and says, Oh, my dear children, how come you here? You must come indoors and stay with me. You will be no trouble. So she took them each by a hand and led them into her little house. And there they found a good meal laid out of milk and pancakes with sugar, apples, and nuts. After that, she showed them two little white beds. And Hansel and Gretel laid themselves down on them and thought they were in heaven. The old woman, although her behavior was so kind, was a wicked witch who laid in wait for the children and had built the little house on purpose to entice them. When they were once inside, she used to kill them, cook them, and eat them. And then it was a feast day with her. The witch's eyes were red, and she could not see very far, but she had a keen scent, like the beasts, and knew very well when human creatures were near. When she knew that Hansel and Gretel were coming, she gave a spiteful laugh and said triumphantly, I have them and they shall not escape me. Early in the morning, before the children were awake, she got up to look at them. And as they lay asleep and so peacefully with round rosy cheeks, she said to herself, What a fine feast I shall have. And then she grasped Hansel with her withered hand and led him to a little stable and shut him up behind a grating and called a, a call and a scream as he might. It was no good. Then she went back to Gretel and shook her crying. Get up, lazy bones. Fetch water and cook something nice for your brother. He's outside in the stable and must be fattened up. And when he is fat enough, I'm going to eat him. Gretel began to weep bitterly, but it was of no use. She had to do what that wicked witch bade her. And so the best kind of victuals was cooked for poor Hansel, when Gretel got nothing but crab shells. Each morning, the old woman visited the little stable and cried, Hansel, stretch out your finger that I may tell if you'll soon be fat enough. Hansel, however, used to hold out a little bone, and the old woman, who had weak eyes, could not see what it was, and supposing it had been Hansel's finger, wondered very much that it was not getting fatter. When four weeks had passed and Hansel seemed to be remaining so thin, she lost, lost patience and could no longer wait. Now then, Greta, 
cried she the little girl. Be quick and draw water. Be handsome, fat, or be lean. Tomorrow I must kill and cook him. Oh, what a grief for a poor little sister have to fetch the water. And how the tears float down over her cheeks. Dear God, pray. Help us, cried she. If we had been devoured by wild beasts in the wood, at least we would have died together. Spare me your lamentation, said the old woman. They of no avail. Early next morning, Greta had to get up, make the fire, and fill the kettle. First we'll do the bacon, said the old woman. I have heated the oven already and kneaded the dough. She pushed poor Greta toward the oven, out of which the flames was already shining. Creep in, said the witch, and see if it's properly hot, so that the bread may be baked. And Greta once in, she meant to shut the door upon her and let her be baked, and then she would have eaten her. But Greta perceived her intention and said, I don't know how to do it. How shall I get in? Stupid goose, said the old woman. The opening is big enough. Do you see? I could get in myself. And she stooped down and put her head in the oven's mouth. Then Greta gave her a push so that she went in farther. And she shut the iron door up upon her and put up the bar. Oh, how frighteningly she howled. But Greta ran away and left the wicked witch burn miserably. Greta went straight to Hansel, opened the stable door, and cried, Hansel, we are free. The old witch is dead. And then out flew Hansel like a bird from his cage as soon as the door was open. How rejoiced they both were. How they fell each on each other's necks and danced about and kissed each other. And as they, and in every corner there stood chests of pearls and precious stones. This is something better than flint stones, said Hansel. And he filled his pockets, and Gretel, thinking she would like to carry something home with her, filled her apron full. Now away we go, said Hansel, and if we can only get out of this witch's wood. When they had journeyed a few hours, they came to a great piece of water. We can never get across this, said Hansel. I see no stepping stones, no bridge. And there's no boat either, said Greta. But here comes a white duck. If I ask her, she will help us over. And so she cried, Duck, duck, here we stand, Hansel and Gretel on the land. Stepping stones and bridge we lack. Carry us over on your nice white back. And the duck came accordingly. And Hansel got upon her and told his sister, Come too. No, answered Gretel. That would be too hard upon the duck. We can go separately, one after the other. And that was how it was managed. And after that, they went on happily until they came to the wood. And the way grew more and more familiar. Till at last, they saw in the distance their father's house. Then they ran till they came upon it, rushed in at the door, and fell on their father's neck. The man had not had quiet hours since he had left the children in the wood. But the wife was dead. And when Greta opened her apron and the pearls and precious stones were scattered all over the room, and Hansel took one handful after another out of his pocket, and then was all carried an end, and they lived in great joy together. Seeing every one, my story is done. And look round the house, there runs a little mouse. He can catch her before she scampers in may make herself a full cap out of her skin. Well, all right. And that has been Hansel and Greta. I don't quite know what that song at the end there was about. But hey, that's what's in the Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. Head you on down to the description. And click on that affiliate link. Get you your own copy there. And you can enjoy yourself a little bit of Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales in all their glory. Let's take us out here. <laughs> All right, 
Thanks for joining in. Well, kisses to the missus. All right.